three temptations and three cures. After a funeral, a mother with a small boy in tow said, We are not Catholic. So I told Johnny that this would not be like our church. Johnny said, I watched the Pope's funeral on television. This will be just like the Pope's funeral. His mother said, This priest isn't the Pope. He is just a parish priest. And Johnny said, When this priest is in his own church, he is just like the Pope. I like that little fellow. He would make a good parishioner. We are all tempted to be thought of as better than we are. We have many temptations. They can all be summarized in the three temptations of Christ. The temptation to pride, to sensuality, and to dominate others. The temptation to change the stones into bread is the temptation to sensuality, Worship, worshipping the devil to rule the world is the temptation to dominate others. Leaping from the parapet of the temple is the temptation to pride. In Dante's Inferno, they are characterized as the leopard, the lion, and the wolf. The leopard, sensuality, the lion, pride, and the wolf, avarice. The temptations of Christ are all the temptations. They are my temptations. In real life, we are not tempted to change stones into bread, but we are tempted to change bread into junk food. A healthy diet is a Lenten penance for many modern Christians. Some overindulge in food or drink or television or inactivity. Many good things become harmful as an addiction. Do they control me or do I control them? The temptation to abuse our bodies with the good things of life is the modern temptation to turn stones into bread. The temptations of Christ are my temptations. We are not tempted to worship the devil to gain dominion over the world, but we are tempted to dominate other people, to control them. Perhaps a spouse, a son, a daughter, a neighbor, or a fellow worker. Christ was offered dominion over the whole world for worshipping the devil. Our temptation is to dominate others by worshipping our own ego. We are tempted to revenge, to get the upper hand, to dominate, often by deceit, dishonesty or discrediting. We are not tempted to rule the world, but we are tempted to rule our own little part of the world. The temptations of Christ are my temptations. We are not tempted to leap from the parapet of the temple or even the steeple of this church, but we are tempted to pretend that we are more than we really are. We are tempted to inflate our talents, our accomplishments, our virtues. A gigantic ego is the modern temptation to leap from the temple. The temptations of Christ are my temptations because they are every temptation. The temptation to pride, 
to sensuality and to dominate others. Lent is about the struggle of dealing with our weaknesses, our temptations. As there are three temptations, there are three traditional Lenten practices to overcome them. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Fasting is the antidote to sensuality. Almsgiving is the cure for domination of others. And prayer is the remedy for pride. If I deny myself through some form of fasting, I confront my self-indulgence. The charity of almsgiving awakens in me a sense of the dignity of others and my solidarity with them, rather than my domination over them. Through faithful prayer, I come to know my true self, humbly before God. St. Augustine wrote, If you want your prayer to fly up to God, give it two wings, fasting and almsgiving. That little boy at the funeral was on to something. Very few priests want the responsibility of being the Pope, but every priest is tempted to make up his own rules and to be a little Pope in his own parish. The temptations of Christ are my temptations. 